bitches do come and go on the regular. That's, we're in fair agreement on that, you know? That's, uh, we, we've all been there, right? Anyways. Young Lean, all right. In the summer of 1996, a Swedish fantasy author hired an astrological specialist to predict the future career for his newborn baby. As the tarot cards laid out their secrets, they revealed something unexpected. The child would one day become a world famous singer. Now, considering nobody else in the family had any musical talent whatsoever, it seemed like a long shot. But the kid's father decided to tell his son what the cards had said on his 18th birthday. The only thing is, that kid would grow up to become the rapper Young Lean and beat his father to it. Thanks to emotional beats and some truly emo-inspired lyrics, this European export would go viral in the early 2010s at the age of 16, with songs like Ginseng Strip 2002 and Hurt. Upon his arrival on the scene, many people were left asking questions like, who the hell is this kid? And just when it seemed clear that Young Lean was going to shut up all of his critics, tragedy struck and his career was thrown into turmoil. Think you know what happened that landed him in a psych ward? Then leave your answers down below before we get into it on our newest episode of Where Are They Now? Young Lean was born Jonathan Leandor Hasted on July 18, 1996 in the country of Sweden. When he was just 8 months old, he and his family then moved to Belarus. At the time, his dad was a noted poet, fantasy author, and translator of French literature, while his mother was a human rights activist who supported LGBTQ communities in countries like Russia, Vietnam, and South America. In fact, Russia was the country in which she had grown up, and that's why her family moved to Belarus, so that her son could spend his childhood in the same countryside that she herself once did. <laughs> <laughs> a few years later, when Jonathan was five, the family returned to Sweden. Around this time, Jonathan began attending school, but he never exactly enjoyed it. Instead of doing his schoolwork, more often than not, he and his friends would get into trouble and get busted for painting graffiti on the walls or for smoking weed. Eventually, Jonathan picked up a part-time job at McDonald's as a teenager. But, as you might imagine, he wasn't exactly looking to make a career out of it. I mean, nobody aspires to be a manager at McDonald's. No shade to anybody that is a manager at McDonald's, we love y'all. Instead, he decided to take advantage of the computer lab in his school to record parts of his very first mixtape, Unknown Death 2002. After getting what he needed out of the lab, Jonathan would drop out of high school at the age of just 16 years old so he can concentrate on a career in music. I like MF Doom, Big Baby Gandhi. Uh, Lil B, Trinidad James, Riff Raff. Released in 2013 under his rap moniker of Young Lean, Unknown Death 2002 was an instant device of sensation, especially in the United States. Over in North America, it was hard for audiences to reconcile this baby-faced white kid with a foreign accent, spitting simple bars on drugs, depression, and offhanded references to pop culture, like he did in his breakthrough hit single, Ginseng Strip 2002. Then boom, bitches come and go. But you know no, what I'm saying. When Ginseng Strip 2002 dropped, it absolutely blew up and became the top song you play for your friend who just got heartbroken. Dude, she said she had bronchitis just to not hang out with me, bro. Who dodges a date with a reason like that? Hey man, don't worry. Bitches come and go, but you know I stay. That song was part of his 2013 EP Lavender, and while some people immediately dismissed him as goofy, Young Lean just so happened to attract a real following and would consistently sell out big club venues whenever he'd cross the ocean to visit the United States. By the end of his first year, Young Lean was dropping his biggest song yet, Kyoto. And while many of his fans expected that number to appear on his debut album, Unknown Memory, Boom, Kyoto. You thought Ginseng Street blew up Lean? Kyoto was like adding dynamite to the fat man. When the project finally saw release in September of 2014, Young Lean had already moved on to other tracks like Yoshi City. Poised to take over the game, it's hard to believe that during the creation of his second album, Young Lean's world would almost completely fall apart. In 2015, while in the midst of recording what would become Warlord, Young Lean would get admitted to a mental hospital. At the time, he was staying in Miami Beach. There, he'd been recording demos for two months in a professional studio for the first time in his life. Now, as shocking as this may be for some of you to hear, and I'm not trying to be a dick, the man that decided to call himself Young Lean did have something of a lean addiction. 
And by his own account, at the time of this project, not only was he addicted to lean, he was also mixing it with stronger medication like Xanax and marijuana, as well as cocaine on a daily basis. At that point, Young Lean began to slip into the personality of different people. At one point, he was dressing as a nurse in hospital scrubs carrying around a knife. Other nights, when drugs were keeping him up, he'd sit out on his balcony and write chapters of a book called Heaven that retold his childhood nightmares. When he showed this book to his manager, Baron McCat, he told his client to stop writing it because it was too dark. Then, at some point on April 7, 2015, Young Lean's nose started to bleed. In a moment of complete syncrasy, he would check in with his girlfriend over in Sweden on Snapchat, and at that moment, her nose was also bleeding too. Overcome by feelings of connectedness, Lean slipped away from reality. He started to destroy his own condo by throwing around furniture and breaking all kinds of glass. Eventually, he began to bleed from the debris and a friend called 911. Once in the hospital, Lean became even more paranoid. He was convinced that something would happen to the hard drive with all of his music on it. So, in the early hours of the morning, he called his manager Baron and begged him to bring him the files. Unfortunately, a short time later, Baron's vehicle would be found wrapped around a traffic signpost. He had been traveling around 60 miles per hour when he veered out of his lane and hit the sign. The engine caught fire as strangers rushed in to help, but they couldn't get him out. Young Lean's manager died that night trying to get his music to his client. I found out my son was dead April 8th that morning. It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in my life. It was surreal. It is a deadly accident. We know that that car just sped right into that pole. And let's take you above right now, Chopper 6, over the scene. So when Young Lean's father finally arrived in Miami, his son did not recognize him. Despite that, they returned to Sweden together, and for two months, his father would nurse him back to health. And while their relationship prior to all of this happening hadn't always been the best, during this time, they grew closer. He told the fader, Back in the day, we used to fight all the time. I'd throw spaghetti at him, and he'd take out all the stuff from my studio in the basement. Not a violent relationship, but a very angry relationship. Ever since he picked me up in Miami and we spent the summer together, we got really close. We're good friends. Now back in his home country, Lean's producer Young God got to work trying to salvage the album that he and his friend had spent so much time recording before everything went to hell. The files that came back from Miami were a total mess, so it took months to fix everything, and occasionally he'd have to call in Lean for some additional vocals. Then in November of 2015, the first single dropped, titled Hoover. By February of 2016, Warlord would see release. But despite finally crossing the finish line, Lean's problems weren't quite over yet. Once home in Sweden, Lean's battles with mental health re-emerged. Despite being largely sober in 2017, he once again began to suffer from psychosis. Thankfully, this time when he was put under observation at the hospital, it became a healing experience. A few weeks into his stay, Lean was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Now having a better understanding of what exactly he was dealing with, especially in terms of treatment, his mind was put at ease. He told Paper Magazine, I was like, oh, okay, thanks. I can take medication, I can talk to people. This is not a mystery, it's a disease. And that made me quite relieved. Focused on his recovery, Lean's creativity truly began to flourish. He began painting and even wrote the musical score to a ballet. I mean, heck, he even got involved in the world of fashion, modeling for Calvin Klein while also debuting his own collaboration with Converse and starting his own fashion label called Stockholm Beauty Group. On the music side of things, he not only dropped his third and best-selling studio album as Young Lean, titled Stranger, but he also began releasing different genres of music like punk with his band Dad Mark and New Wave Garage Rock under a variation of his real name, Jonathan Leandor 96. By 2019, Lean was laying the foundation for his fourth and most recent Young Lean project, Stars, and looking to create something of a Fleetwood Mac album. Well, when the project arrived in May of 2020, critics believed that he had delivered on that promise with polished and playful vulnerability on tracks like Boy Life in EU. This would also become the first project that Lean has ever made completely sober. Well, at least mostly sober. He has admitted that he still drank a little bit of codeine while recording, but he stopped drinking alcohol and doing other hard drugs. And while that may not make it sound like Young Lean is completely out of the woods, it's definitely a far better spot than where we found him when he started his career off as one of the world's first emo rappers and an all-around sad boy. He might still be sad, but at least now, drugs are not pushing him over the edge. As for where he might go next, well, that's a story for another time. After all, you are caught up on all the recent history of Young Lean. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video.